Welcome back, gang. It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com. Back with, you guessed it, a Templar PvE healer build. This is going to be a beginner-friendly build, so we're not going to be using the Mythic or any Trials gear, but we're allowed to do some of the hardest four-player content in the game, specifically Dread Cellar Hard Mode. You're going to want to watch this video if you want to learn about healer mechanics, some easy setup on the bar, along with some gear options that you can get that are very flexible if you do plan on doing trials or very hard content. Healers have changed slightly, but there's just so many dang gear options right now and a lot of really good things to collect and pick up. So I'm going to walk you through skills, gear, champion point, what I use to be effective, and you can ultimately change this as you see fit. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here we are talking about my Templar, which is kind of a hybrid, actually. I'm using a stamina base heal. I have some damage that I'm going to be doing and some damage added sets. So the first concept we're going to go over is the skills. And what's really important for you to do as a Templar healer or healer in general is add value to your team. You can do this in a couple of different ways. Typically, people add resource sustain with gear sets and other buffs and debuffs. You can also add damage with debuffs and stripping of armor and so forth. And maybe even add a little bit of damage yourself. So our goal with this build is to heal well, but not just heal. We want to increase overall damage per second of our group through either resource sustain or damage added sets or even doing some damage ourselves. So that's kind of how I have it set up. So we're going to talk about the skills first and go through them. So the first thing up is what weapon choice and why? Obviously, we're going to go with the restoration staff for a variety of reasons. As a Templar, you really don't even need restoration staff, to be honest. But there are some good abilities and skills in here. So the first skill up is radiating regeneration. Basically, it's going to be a heal over time. I take this morph. It has a little bit longer duration and it heals three players. This is going to be very important to keep using this off cooldown because the heals over time are going to proc spell power cure, giving major courage which we're going to cover a little bit later consider this your priority on your front bar and the way i have my front bar set up is very very simple and you could add subtract or take away things to make it a little bit more complex maybe a little bit more utility so that's radiant regeneration we're going to cast that one to two times depending on how many people are in our party next ability up is going to come from our class dawn's wrath and this is purifying light one of my favorite abilities in the game both pv and pvp you're not necessarily using this for the damage though it does add some damage it's going to soak up like a balloon then explode after a while dealing damage and it scales off of your spell damage now and another reason you're going to use this is going to put a healing circle around the target when it blows up for six seconds and that can heal for quite a bit so usually on the boss or mini boss whoever our priority target is i put this on them so when it explodes that heals per second on the tank at least or in melee range is significantly noticeable another thing this does and what i constantly preach people is looking in the passives because this will really make a difference in understanding your class prism this right here casting a dawn's wrath ability while in combat generates three ultimate and this can occur every six seconds well if you notice purifying light it's a six second duration so constantly casting a dawn's wrath ability is going to generate you ultimate more ultimate means better healing or more damage ultimately see what i did there Another thing to note about the Dawn's Wrath ability is really important in raids if you're going to be doing that, and that's Illuminate. Casting a Dawn's Wrath ability grants minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage. So you as a Templar can get major and minor sorcery in your class kit, one with potions and one with casting a Dawn's Wrath ability. That's why having at least one Dawn's Wrath ability is so dang important because it generates ultimate and does proc this increasing overall dps and your healing potential as well next up i have a flex spot so for average players i wouldn't overcomplicate things and for me specifically i just like to keep it simple so i have inner light in this specific spot on my three key so it just adds uh max magic what that means is more max magic more healing especially if you're running a proc set that's based off of max magic like healing it's going to heal for even more so this is just mainly to keep it simple along with the spell critical buff on our front bar but we're going to use potions primarily to keep that up 100 percent of the time something you can slot in here instead is combat prayer 
So combat prayer, and the reason I don't typically run it, is minor berserk. A lot of folks in trials and dungeons are running a five-piece set called Kinra's Wrath. This is going to give people around the person that has five stacks for proc minor berserk. So that buff becomes a bit redundant. Moreover, I have minor resolve from this ability here. And minor resolve is provided for my magma incarnate monster helm. So it's basically a redundant... Um, skill the way I have it set up. Also, if you're playing in groups that are uncoordinated, folks typically don't know where to stand or why. So as a healer, what you're trying to do is kind of set up like a diamond formation where the, the tank should be facing this way away from the group. You should have two DPS roughly kind of a little bit spaced apart and you kind of come back here as the healer and then you hit your DPS dust. Well, in coordinated groups where folks have been playing this game for years and years and know where people are in the positions of fight, that's really easy. For the average player that's just queuing up a random vet finder, you're not going to actually find that in reality. That's why I swapped that out. Another ability you can swap for is uh, Illustrious Healing. So this is just a big old healing springs and it just does heals over time. Downside of it is, is it's not mobile. So it does really, really well in stationary fights. Think trials or dungeons with very long single target fights. But you'll notice it's not mobile at all. So I pretty much slot that in just for trials if I'm going to do that. Otherwise, I just leave my bar very simple for high mobility dungeons, which is primarily what I play along with arenas. Next ability up comes from the Adric Spear skill line. That's Blazing Spear here in my four key. So it does damage, it does damage over time for 10 seconds. And folks can pick up and activate the synergy, restoring stamina or magic or whatever is higher. The other morph of this, Luminous Shards, gives you magic and stamina back. That's useful, but primarily useful just for the tank. The reason I go with this morph is it does a lot of damage, a staggering amount of damage over time. So even as a healer, I'm still pulling 20 to 25,000 damage per second, just keeping this up and some other buffs. So that's why I go with this. It really adds a lot of damage and is quite noticeable. How I use it is kind of similar to uh, my Dawn's Wrath ability, Purifying Light. I will light up a target with Dawn's Wrath and typically throw a spear on top of it. And you can see that spear just ticking damage over time and it can proc burning light and explode along with Dawn's Wrath. So I keep those two things on our primary target is the tank is typically right on top of it and or melee DPS. So they're going to get the synergy to resource sustain. It's going to do a little bit damage and it's going to proc a bigger explosion on my purifying light. So, so far, what we have on our front bar, if you play this loadout, 10 second heal over time. Um, a six second explosion, but I usually keep it up every 10 seconds and then a 10 second blazing spear. So you see that key right there is 10 seconds. So on our front bar, typically we have three cool cooldowns or three abilities that we're going to activate if we're not needing a big burst heal. One, two, three, bar swat. But we do have a burst heal on our bar and that's Honor the Dead restoring light here, the very first ability. The reason I go with Honor the Dead is I'm not doing a lot of trials. I'm doing a lot of dungeons. So I really only need pretty much a single target heal. Usually my heals over time are so much that it doesn't really matter that much. So that's why I go with Honor of the Dead. And it does proc Magma Incarnate. If you're doing trials and you're playing with larger groups, I would go with Breath of Life, the other morph. This is just incredible for resource sustain. Now we go with the ultimate of choice. And you have two really strong um, choices, in my opinion. Life Giver or what I call Rest the Alt, Resto Alt. It just basically casts these three abilities um, all at once. Radiating, um, Combat Prayer, and Steadfast Ward. It'll cast them all at once. It's just your get out of jail free card at 118 ultimate. This costs nothing. So it's almost always up. This is extremely useful in high mobility fights or when you have to get an ultimate frequently to survive for your team. So Dread Cellar Hard Mode, this is what I use. There's usually a better one if you don't need actually a strong burst heal, and that's Reviving Barrier. So what Reviving Barrier does, well, it gives you a big barrier, obviously. And it does some heals over time, which is nice, um, and you can cast this preemptively. It has a pretty high magic cost, but there's a really good uh, passive here. If you got to do some PvP to get this, but increases your magic recovery by 10% just for slotting it. So slotting on our front bar, which was what we probably need um, to heal the most, is going to give us a lot of recovery. So that's an option that I would highly recommend using Reviving Barrier in this specific spot, unless you're doing high mobility, high intensive uh, hard mode or arena fights where you're unfamiliar, just pop rest of all. Now we're going to go to the back bar. And so you're going to hear a bunch of different reasons to use different um, staffs. Fire, lightning, and ice. And they all have their pros and cons. And usually it's in the elemental status effects. So if you don't know, you can come to this help. 
uh, menu here and you can type in status effect. Of course, it's not working. And it'll say right here, status effect. So fire, target burns for additional damage. Shock and instant damage applies minor vulnerability for four seconds. Frost, instant damage applies minor brittle, minor brittle, and, all, and so on. We'll talk about why minor brittle is important, but you have to have the staff equipped for that effect to happen. So it kind of just breaks it down here. And why I'm sticking with the shock, a couple different reasons. One, minor vulnerability. You can get this buff. Typically, it's much, much easier to get this buff in a trial, especially if you're playing with other wardens and so forth. I set this build up for the average player to pick it up and not be dependent on what other people are running and have this expectation that you know what every single player is running. Because that's just not reality in PvE. That's not reality for me. And I have a sweaty PvE group that I roll with. Another reason Shock is really, really good is it sets off balance, which we talked about right there. So off balance, if you don't know, you can get double the resource sustains if you do a fully charged heavy attack. So that's another thing to keep in mind that the off balance and fully charged heavy attack is much, much easier on destruction staff. You see this? I don't have to aim it. I don't have to wait. I just sit there and just rip off a fully charged heavy attack. Okay. It gets better. So when I set something off balance and I'll see that pop up, we'll come to the restoration staff here. Again, we're looking at passes. This is what it dictates why you do things. Your fully charged heavy attacks restore 30% more magic. So this is what I use in PvP actually on my mag part, but I'll do this. I'll see the off balance, I'll bar swap, and I'll fully charge uh, a resto. And it's basically like <laughs> 12 to 13,000 magic or more um, off doing that fully charged resto. So it's a really nice way to stain. Also proccing uh, vulnerability, adding damage. So you don't have to worry about who's in your group, who's wanting, running woof, but what buff and why. So that's why I go with a lightning staff. And we've already talked about one ability from destruction staff and that's elemental blockade that's going to be my three key here so what this is going to do it's going to proc the status effect and it's also going to proc the charge uh enchant on our back bar using a shock enchant so the whole point of this is to set enemies off balance and hopefully we can get that minor vulnerability to proc set them off balance and also do a fully charged heavy attack people will tell you to run frost staff people will tell you to run fire staff do whatever you feel is best. I personally like the lightning staff, and that's what I'm sticking with. Next ability is up, and we're going to go left to right here. It's just building your Templar house. So um, channel uh, focus here. This is our ability. It does so many dang things. It costs basically nothing. 25 second duration, a very small radius of three meters, but it gives you resistances and gives you magicka. Uh, plus, it heals you while you're standing in the rune, and it will proc some of these um, buffs here. Let me see, find it. Da -da -da. It's minor mending. So minor mending. It looks like this. So that's step one of our house. And you can come outside of it and you're still getting your armor buff. So you can just lay it down and ro rotate around. Don't have to step in it. Now when you step back in it, it's going to give you the healing. Okay? So don't feel like you have to hang in there. But you at least need to cast it to get your armor buff. More armor means the less damage you're going to be taking. Um, extended ritual is up next. So this is going to be heals over time. Allies can use the synergy. And you can use the other more ritual retribution to do a little bit more damage. It does cut the duration in half. So that is something to be cognizant of. It has a big, nice uh, radius of 12 meters. And it cleanses five negative effects. That five is really noticeable, especially in some specific fights and, and dungeons. It's going to scale off your highest offensive stat, so max magic typically or spell damage. So you put both of these things down and you're getting a lot of heals per second. Just standing in your rune and also that big ritual and you can see how large that 12 meters is. And then we talked about blockade and then now I have puncturing uh, sweeps in this specific spot. Let me show you. So the reason I have puncturing sweeps in here is increase your critical damage done by 10% with an Adric Spear ability slotted. So you'll notice I have one on the front and one on the back for this specific reason. Typically, I don't do too many just sitting there doing puncturing sweeps, but sometimes it's actually necessary. So if all my buffs are running, uh, I'm good on resource sustain, I don't have another global cooldown to take a, uh, a hold of, I'll use puncturing sweeps, especially if it's a trash packs or something else. I typically don't want to be too close in range but it's nice to have some flexibility and do damage, not be completely dependent on the other DPS. So if we're kind of thinking about this uh, back bar, you have these very long duration buffs here, 24 seconds. So you're not really necessarily reapplying these frequently. The ones you're gonna reapply is your blockade every 14 seconds and this one here. 
Echoing Vigor. This seems very odd that I would have Echoing Vigor, and really it's for the resource, um, our five-piece set. It's going to give weapon and spell damage to five people in our group. So this is a stamina-based heal. It has 2,800 stamina. This is why I'm going to use Tristat food, so I get a little bit more stamina pool. And the heal is okay. You can see it's, you know, 3,000 on a crit there, 1,800. So it's not necessarily the reason we're using it for the heal. We're using it for powerful assault. Tanks typically run this, but not always. Again, you don't want to be dependent on who's running what, who's doing this, who's doing that. And I'll give you some other flex spots. But consider this, if you're not going to use the powerful assault, consider this your flexibility. I wasn't using powerful assault. What I would put on here is beam, radiant glory or radiant oppression. Glory is nice because it heals you based on percentage of missing health. Radiant oppression is nice because it does a bit more damage. So I would like glory if I was going to be doing this as a healer because it gives me a range execute. So when everything up is my buffs are up, I can just sit back and beam it along with the other DPS and get it down. So again, I would use echoing vigor with powerful assault to have a ton of value added. If you don't, fine, swap it out. Next ability up is aggressive warhorn basically the staple in pve dps it's going to add some max stats which adds max damage and then also it's going to give major force for 10 seconds a very very important buff now there is a crit damage cap so you have to be aware of this and this is where you can find it crit damage 22 percent we're nowhere close to this but the value is 125 percent so your dps need to know not to have over that with a major um, force up so with the aggressive war horn up so be aware of and that's what we're going to use offensively so this is like boom we need to do big damage it's also in the same um assault skill line so it's going to proc powerful assault as well speaking of powerful assault let's switch gears and talk about the gear let's talk about the five piece powerful assault and some of the other gear choices i got lightning staff for powerful assault back here so when you cast an ability while in combat, you and five other group members, so you're going to want two people to run this in a trial, within 10 meters gains 307 weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds. So the, the heal from Echoing Vigor lasts 10 seconds. This is where your um, basically your gameplay loop is. You have some of those uh, 10 second buffs on the front of your bar. Coming back here, you have a 10 second heal over time with a 10 second duration buff on your back bar. So you are kind of swapping back and forth. This isn't super critical that you maintain this through Echoing Bigger, but it will add a ton and ton of damage. Now, what I use instead of this in replacement of this, if I'm doing a trial or someone else is running this, I'll run something like Stone Talkers. This is from Rock Grove Trial. A little bit more complicated, but you're going to basically put a fully charged heavy attack, put a bomb on something. It blows up and re restores resources for a certain amount of damage that's been done. That is a trial set, so not necessarily easy to get a hold of. If you don't like doing that, there's Hollow Fang. This is a good old staple in what I've used for <clears throat> quite a long time, almost this entire year. When you do critical healing or critical damage, it's going to spawn this ball, giving uh, exploding, restoring magic, implying minor, uh, minor vitality, I should say, to group members within six meter radius increasing their healing done and it can occur every nine seconds so either way you do this you want your jewelry and um, your back bar staff to have something of value whether it's resource sustained whether it's damage added this is what i really like now let's swap in to talk about the five piece on the body at all times and that's spell power cure basically the healer's job is to provide major courage whether it's in a dungeon or a trial typically that's what's what's going on while the tanks provide minor courage i'm doing both with this specific build so we're getting major courage through spell power cure. The five piece when you overheal, meaning someone's at 100% and you're still healing them, it's going to proc major courage for five seconds, increasing their weapon and spell damage for 430. The strength of this set really is that it's mobile. So it doesn't require like Oli, Olemeyer, a big rune where you have to step into it and get it. The downside is the duration isn't very long. So this is fantastic for dungeons because a lot of the dungeon fights you have required a uh, high mobility and you can expect high uptime because pretty much no one's taking a whole lot of damage outside of the tank and the heals over time usually keep people topped off or above 100 percent keeping high uptime on this so another set like i talked about olemeyer is the other one and this can do the same thing but it puts a very small circle down so that's something you can run so that's going to be our five piece on our body at all time is uh spell power cure you can use Oli or use another set if you want heck even mother sorrow with high spell critical can work now next up is going to be magma incarnate this thing is absolutely incredible not perfect not good for every situation but dungeons incredible 
what it's going to do is the one piece is going to give you great resource sustain both magic and stamina you're going to heal target the lowest health is going to uh, proc this ability that's going to give minor courage and uh, minor resolve increasing weapon and spell damage and armor for 10 seconds it can occur every 15 seconds and the ball can bounce around to group mates so if you're in this dungeon you're actually going to give minor courage possibly to every single person in the dungeon but it's proc by a single target heal that's why we're taking honor the dead morph that's why we're taking some of these other morphs um channel the focus will also proc this as well on yourself so you're keeping a very very high uptime this thing almost always fires out this adds a ton of damage because if you've calculated already this is 215 spell damage and weapon damage this right here is 430 and this right here is 296 but at gold quality it's over 300 that's almost a thousand spell damage weapon damage to your party which you can maintain a very high percentage uptime that will skyrocket their damage even me i'm sitting around about 5,000 almost uh spell damage fully buff not to mention as a templar we're giving minor sorcery as well increasing by 10 percent major sorcery increases your spell damage by 20 percent a lot of tanks run yalakrins even in dungeons and that's going to provide the same exact buffs you don't always want to have that on something you can run instead is symphony of blades symphony of blades when you heal an ally who's under 50 percent you're going to basically grant them um restoring magic or stamina one second for six seconds and occur every 18 seconds per target this is incredible resource sustain for you and your group, whatever, however big it is. So I'm doing trials. Typically, I go to this instead um, because it's just so useful for resource sustain. A lot of people are switching away from resource sustain um, monster helms because a lot of folks are running Bahases. And if you don't know, Bahases is the magic set from Rock Grove. It's going to increase your damage based on your missing max magic. So a lot of folks are running really low sustain because of this set and it's so so dang strong it stacks with other major buffs so you have to be cognizant of that you have to find the sweet spot between adding value damage wise or not so symphony of blades is another good option um another one for brand new players um when you're just starting out is sentinel of razakum or whatever i probably can't say it right but it's gonna spawn a spider and that's gonna heal restore magic and stamina the problem is it's not mobile and you don't necessarily get a select who it's going to go to, but it can be a really, really good thing to pick up right away. There's also a new mythic that uh, is nice. I haven't gotten yet. Spalder of Rune. So when you crouch, it's going to um, add up to six allies in the or area. This aura around you, 260 weapon and spell damage. But it's going to reduce your resource sustain by 70 for each ben ally benefited. Well, in a dungeon, not too bad. Even in a trial, remember, you might be stepping in and out of this because it's 12 meters, just like your extended ritual. This is a really, really good option if someone else in your group's either giving minor courage or has the magma incarnate helm as well to add value to your team. But the way I have this set up, no mythic, nothing. Just very, very easy. That leaves a two-piece and we need an arena weapon. So what I go with, since I'm using um, Radiant Regeneration, not necessarily the best choice, but the Maelstrom. It's going to do crit it's going to restore magic so a nice magic restore you do need a little bit of crit the thief mundestone perhaps to make this more valuable another great option is running the um dragon star arena two piece this is going to be awesome for grand healing not very mobile but if you're doing trials the resource sustain is both magic and stamina plus it's every one second so putting down that spring adds a crap ton of resource sustain for your group so there's some other ones too. This is a goofy one, Badish Ram Hollow, but you have to actually use the ability. So that's the key. Asylum has a really good one. Let's see if I can find it. That comes from Trials, Asylum Sanctor. We go down here. Where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Timeless Blessing. Casting Combat Prayer, Blessing of Protection. Gives you reduced uh, ability costs for three seconds afterwards. So you can hit Combat Prayer, do a big high cast... Uh, uh, honor the dead or something else uh, that's what i use but i have to slot combat prayer instead so that's where you would put inner light change out combat prayer so let me pull up three gear charts give you some options based on what level of the game you're at okay so beginner option number one is a five piece of winter's respite this is an overland set that you can get from western skyrim and it's basically going to augment your healing especially your healing spring so when you cast an ability that leaves an area effect ground going to heal for 10 seconds it's going to heal a lot so as a brand new player it's much much easier to hit this you're going to have uh, armor of seducers reducing the cost of your magic abilities making it much simpler and then willpower 
because you can get it straight away. You don't need a monster hound. So if you can see the layouts, you can go with infused and divines, max magic lifts. Don't worry so much about the traits. When you obtain these armor sets, really you're just looking for the five piece. You don't need to get all concerned about having divines because you're going to move on from this straight away. And in fact, what you're trying to move on to is obtaining a monster helm and then obtaining some dungeon gear. So the next part would be the advance or kind of what I'm wearing. You're going to work towards obtaining a monster helm. Magma Incarnate is quite hard to get. So you might start with Sentinel Razakum or Symphony of Blades first and work towards Magma Incarnate because the dungeon veteran Dread Cellar is quite hard. Then you're going to work towards getting White Gold Tower done and Spell Power Cure. You can do it on normal. You don't even need to do it on veteran to get the five piece. Now you're going to go with Infused and Divine's traits. So Infuse on the big pieces, Divine's on the other ones, Max Magic Lift. I go all spell damage and then the Atronach Mundus Stone. So if you don't want to go that route you might want to go um all magic recovery and then change your Munda stone for a thief or the ritual or something else but that's what i do now on the weapon choices i'm going to go with powered on the front with a weapon damage enchant that thing does give you spell damage so light attacking is important even as a healer back bar charge shock and then we're going to have arcane on the powerful assault so you're going to need to use some transmute stones to make that happen with the lightning stab so you're going to move towards getting that monster helm, getting a five piece, and then powerful assault, which you can obtain in Imperial City sewers. And then lastly is kind of the advanced setup. So what I switch to if I'm going to do trials and I go with Symphony of Blades as my monster helm, and then I go with Stone Talkers on my back bar. So a couple resource sustained sets. Another folks are also doing Martial Knowledge and there's Roaring out, uh, Opportunist and these other uh, Jorvals is a common uh, trials loadout. I don't get into the trials and do all the veteran hard modes. This dungeon is, uh, this build is mainly made for dungeons and our veteran hard modes and arenas. But this is something that I use if I do do the trials, whether it's normal or veteran. Spell power cure, master's dragon star, and I slot healing spring with stone talkers on the back bar and symphony of blades and the monster helm. So let's talk about the miscellaneous here and I'll show my character off. So I go 64 uh, attributes into Magica. I go down here, I do use the Atronach Munda Stone with uh, B-Wood Sugar Skull. So if you do that route, you're going to have a lot more stamina, which is nice because you're going to be casting Echoing Vigor. Then I'm going to rely on Spell Power Potions primarily. You can buy the Alliance ones, which I do. This is going to give you extra magic recovery and major sorcery. So you don't have to slot something on your bar to get that. Also, make sure to get Medicinal Use. Uh, medicinal Use, I say it right? Yep, Medicinal Use right here. Um, it's going to like make po uh, potions last 30% longer, so you can get 100% uptime. So you can just run them over and over. It's expensive, but that's kind of what you have to do at endgame. Now, if we go to champion points here, I have it specked out kind of weird. So I go with Fighting Finesse because it affects your healing and damage done. I go with Arcane Supremacy, Increase Max Magic, because it applies to both your healing and damage done. And, and then I go with Untamed Aggression because, you guessed it, it applies to your healing and damage done. I spec with these three things instead of just all healing ones because I'm doing dungeons primarily and sometimes I'm doing it with uncoordinated folks. So if I need to be a damage dealer, I can do it seamlessly. I'm not taking Deadly Aim and Master Arms because I don't want to go all out because these two slottables affect both my healing and my damage. Not as good as pure uh, Master of Arms of Deadly Strikes, not as good as Soothing Tides or Focus Mending, but it's good enough to have an all-around build and that's what we're going for. I do take one healing one. Increase your healing done with healing over time effects. So I can get burst healing single target. I can get, you know, 30,000. I think I've gotten 40,000 when my tank was just about dead. So a 40,000 honor the dead heal, that's plenty. What I need is really strong heals over time with radiant regeneration, extended ritual, and so forth. So that way I'm not having to constantly cast heals. I can focus on doing damage added stuff. And Echoing Vigor actually heals a lot. So that's my thought processes. Take three that apply to both healing and DPS and take one for your most impactful way to survive. That is heals over time. Now we're going to come over here into the red tree and then I just take three simple ones. Rejuvenation for resource sustain, armor, um, max health, and then spirit master. So in decreasing time to res allies. And I take a bunch of these. A lot of people ask me, do you have 300 CP loadouts and 600 CP? I do not. But if you're a brand new player, don't worry about the slottables. Take and what you do is you come over here and take 10 points into Eldritch Insight. You're going to go to Staving Death. You're going to take 10 points in a quick recovery. Take 20 points in here straight away as fast as you can. This is going to reduce your damage uh, taken 
by NPCs by 10%. This will massively increase your survivability. Trust me on this. Insane difference in your survivability. So come here first if you're a brand new player. Or if you're a sweat lord like me, you got a gazillion champion points. It doesn't really matter. So, and then the green tree, there is some benefit to taking this warm out and gifted, uh, gifted rider. But usually I just go with treasure hunter, rationer, liquid efficiency, and steed's blessing. I don't even know why I have this laudable. I'm exposed here in this. I shouldn't have showed you that. Delete that. But yeah, that's kind of my champion point loadout. And so a quick rotation, like how you actually play this thing. And I'll, I'll set my house down is what I do to start. And then I get in combat. Then I hit Echoing Vigor. I hit my Blockade and I Bar Swat. Radiator Generation. Purifying Light. And then those globals are down. So I go back to my back bar. I look at my bar. One, two. And then I got to do my powerful assault again blockade again go back to my front bar purifying light so it's three globals on the front you might get one two and then echoing channel down potions we're gonna put blockade down purifying and this is it so the time you take is you only take time away from doing this rotation when you're taking pressure i need a big burst heal otherwise it's basically three globals on your front three globals on your back and you're kind of ping-ponging back and forth between those two so that's the build. I hope you get something out of this. I got some gameplay where we narrate a veteran hard mode fight. I'm going to let you watch that. So if you like these type of videos, let me know. I'll be happy to keep on cranking them out because I love this game. Love these builds and this Templar is really, really good. Basic. You don't have, you can carry in a dungeon and you can adapt it and change it for a trial. Thanks for watching. All right. On you. Okay. So we're going to buff up here. So I'm just you know, buffing, put my house down, powerful assault. He hits a cola. I'm going to hit a war horn. I'm going to hit a blockade, purify. I'm going to try to do my best to keep a stick on him. Um, it's tough as a tank, especially if you don't have a healer. Well, usually we three DPS it and no heals, but Gray is really good. So put purifying light. I'm going to throw a stick over here. These little cubes, you get this NPC synergy. Um, we missed it, but the person that gets the synergy can basically one-shot these cubes. You want to do that because otherwise they'll start to pile up on you. So, uh, Zoss loves their flame waves. See those guys? So, I'm going to grab the thing here. I'm gonna watch one, two, and highlights them so you can kind of one-shot them. And so, you rotate around, and then this is the mechanic where you stop and usually dump. So, we're going to do blockade. This is a really nice check um, because it's so intensive on mobility. So as a tank or a healer, it's a good check for you to do to see if your build can handle high mobility and high resource sustain. So that's why I like coming to this dungeon, not to mention it's just such a cool dungeon. The dungeons in this game are just incredible. They really are. So we're going to go down here. I'm going to save my ultimate for when the fire line's done and we're going to drop the house. I'm going to keep a stick on the healer or the tank, excuse me, right there. Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to hit a war horn. Uh, there we go. We drop a blockade. I'm going to build my house again. Hit my heels over time. You're seeing we're getting overwhelmed by these little totems. So I'm going to go grab this and try to knock them down quick. Otherwise, they'll kind of overwhelm you. There we go. And I got another one. So it kind of highlights them too. So you can see them through walls and stuff. One, two, three. Okay, got it. So then heals over time, rock and rolling. Another one. So I'm just going to keep it up. The DPS can do their job. I'm going to throw a stick on our uh, tank here. So we got them down. Now there will be two flame waves during execute. So we just got to kind of hang out tight. Again, throwing a stick, making sure our tank has resources is the number one thing. So it can be pretty tough, tough on the tank. Okay. Keeping my head on a swivel here. Throwing a spear out. Just doing big heals. We're at 20%. Grabbing the other thing. Trying to hit those last two remaining ones to see it drops here. And so this is where we're going to do powerful assault. I'm going to build my house. Grab this. Purifying light. I'm going to try to get those last two in the back here. Get those last two down. There we go. Light them up. Throw a stick on them. And 8% we should be good. And 400,000 HP left. Yep, I'm just going to breath here. 100,000. 100,000 on a St. Laurent jacket. Okay. Good job. Nice job, y'all. Good.